Christian and addiction. As we have learned, as we have learned already, uh, addiction in Latin is surrendering to the gods, which is what we learn from the book of Hosea is the misusing of God's blessing. This morning, uh, Elder Ong gave us another very wonderful uh, summary uh, from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 10 and, uh, and then in chapter 11 this morning that we see uh, the powerful love of our Father. And he described to us in his opening statement the various uh, faces of God. Okay, so that is the relationship of love between the father and the rebellious uh, son. Okay, right. So I want to remind us again, the book of Hosea, so many uh, 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 thousand years ago that it was written, right, mm -hmm. but it's applicable. As you see here, uh, Apostle Paul will bring to us <coughs> To remind us in First Corinthians chapter six, verse twelve to twenty, let me go through with you, okay? And this is important for us to think about. I'll say all things are lawful for me. This is my father's work. Where's it don't? Okay. <laughs> it's a very funny. Okay? Before I proceed, actually I prepared really. I prepared, chosen the song already. My first song was This is My Father's Work. <laughs> Taken. <laughs> then my closing song is Feel My Eyes. <laughs> I said, Sit down! <laughs> it's like coming very early, you know, this time. Tuesday, he sent me a <laughs> So everything got. But, you see, you see how God works or not? These are the songs that we need to sing today. Yes, <laughs> all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. Very important. We just read quickly and then we just fail to understand what Paul is trying to say. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. It's often that we have been enslaved. Huh? Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. We eat to live. But, also, but many a time, Singapore, be careful. Huh? Singapore is the paradise of food. Makan is a pastime, right? So we live to eat. The body is not made for sexual immorality, but the law and the law for and but for the law and the law for the body. And God raised the law and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know? It's so important, huh? Your bodies are members of Christ. Christ is holy. Shall I then take the member of Christ? It's like robbing, you know. You take the member of Christ, the Holy God. And all, and what happened? And make them members of a prostitute. Why? Never, huh? Or say, or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? The book of Hosea talked. He gave it, give it, give it to us from the image of a marriage between the husband and the wife, right now. Okay? Hosea, the prophet, and the wife, Roma, and God, the holy God, and his people, Israel. <coughs> so, spiritual adultery equivalent to physical adultery. Alright? So, this is how it goes. <coughs> the two, he said, for it, as it is written, the two will become one flesh, but he who is joined with the Lord becomes one spirit with him. So instead of joining with God, we join to the prostitute. Verse 18, flee from uh, sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. This one is very important. That's why I make it so big a form. This is form 22. <laughs> you are not your own. Because you were bought with a price. High price. 
death of Christ. So, conclusion, we have to glorify Him. There is no other way, non-negotiable. Okay, that is why every chapter, so I'm talking to uh, our, our speaker next Sunday, it is a repeat, a repeat, a repeat. And I don't know how and when then we will wake up uh, to this call. Okay? Alright, so this is happening still, and this, this remains a problem. <coughs> a few thousand years ago, it is still relevant today. Right? So, I suppose these are the modern day uh, addiction. I don't know. Anyone of you here is addicted to one of this, or some of this, or all of this? Anyone? Yes? All smiling. Let me still have more. <laughs> okay. But I want to tell you something about this modern day uh, enjoyment called sugar. Are we got doctors in the house? <laughs> so you say that you don't have? Okay, maybe you have. Sugar has no real nutritional value. Yes? Any objection? There's no fiber, protein, or healthy fats. No vitamins or minerals. Just empty calories that spike your blood sugar and then accelerate your appetite and the effects on your health. The fast day thing. There are two doctors laughing. It has been scientifically proven that too much of sugar destroys your health over and over again. Sugar is poison. Wow, I don't believe huh? <laughs> How can I eat poison this morning? <laughs> it's perfectly normal and healthy to eat a very limited amount of sugar per day. But, listen, watch carefully, huh? two tablespoons or even more leads straight to what? Very brutal disease. Who are they? Diabetes, diabetes, obesity, cancer, heart disease. Non-alcoholic uh, liver disease, bad skin, low energy level, adrenaline fatigue, la, huh? brain fog, anxiety, addiction. The list goes on and on. Look at the last statement. There is extremely big long-term health risk for every small short-term, for a very small short-term pleasure. That is sugar poisoning. Are you sure that you're not addicted? Still, still not convinced. <laughs> Food high in sugar activate, uh, activates the reward center. There's a reward center in our brain. A large amount of dopamine is released. It's a few good factor. Huh? Okay? Eat high sugar foods often develop a tolerance which in turn requires us to eat more. I drop like that. Huh? To get that high, huh? the same level of reward. Over time, the keyword is over time, and with an overstimulation of this uh, reward center, we develop an addiction to sugar. Because it simply makes us feel good when we eat it. Due to the powerful effect sugar has on the brain, it can be thought of like a drug in that it functions similar, similar to how actual drugs like rain and cocaine do. Hey, hello. If you're addicted to sugar, you consume too much and over and over, actually you're a drug addict. Yes or no? Doctor? Uh, Dr. Nigel was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this chart. Huh? If you eat an apple, it's 4.5 cubes of sugar that you consume. There are so many. I, I go for the high one. Huh? Look at this one. Huh? Huh? 7.5 .5 cubes of sugar. I know some of us drink coffee, uh, either no sugar, go P.O., right? 
Oh, maybe one cube. Uh, actually, I'm now using one cube only. Ah, uh. uh, look at this one. Look at this one. Uh, this one is actually Starbucks hot chocolate with whipped cream. Oh, now nice. point five cube. Wow, more than one 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 cube. Wow, Ah, uh, orange juice, orange juice. Ten cube. Wow. Okay. <laughs> McDonald chocolate milkshake. <laughs> okay, which one is the lowest? This is the lowest. If you eat carrot, also eat sugar, you know? Carrot got one cube. I like carrot. Wow, Liao, ah, finish, ah. Think about it, no. Remember, I asked you to do, to go and do a survey on yourself. One week, if what other thing you eat, right? Monday to Saturday, to Sunday, you'll be swallowing sugar on the way. Okay, just just based on this charge, what do you think? How many cube you you actually swallow per week? How many? <laughs> <laughs> Go one kilo, one kilo of sugar. <laughs> okay, but this is to uh, help us to understand that we are we are living in a dangerous time. Modern invention or discovery or product can kill us easy and cause us to be at That is why Singapore need more and more doctors, more and more polyclinic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more time. Anyone of you want to share your addiction experience? No point here, point there. Huh? You want, you have to come up. Okay. I know it's very difficult, huh? Okay, we'll talk more about this. Uh, if, if I am an addict, let's say now I I stand up here and then I tell you, say, <clears throat> uh. Dear brothers and sisters, I I am uh, I am addicted to drugs. Uh, I am addicted to gambling. How will you feel? What will you do to me? Hey, EDC, set him. <laughs> Very dangerous, ah. Uh. We we'll talk about this later. Okay, now I'm not going to do all the works. You can see the five books down there. Actually, six, ah. Uh. The other one, ah, uh, I did not read. There are five books down here. I'll introduce to you after. But you have some job to do. Okay, I selected three uh, top addiction in Singapore. The first one is internet addiction. You know why people spend so much time on the internet, right? Day and night, never sleep. Okay, it can be Korean drama. It can be pornography, it can be game, whatever. Huh? The second one is gambling. Okay, you can gamble everywhere. Huh? Correct or not? You can gamble everywhere huh? and anywhere. Even in computer also. Third one is the drugs and alcohol addiction. These two actually usually link together. Okay, chemical. All right. Okay, we're going to break into three groups here. Number one, two, three. Okay. Number one to three, right? Then we will discuss. Each group will discuss one addiction. Okay, what do we discuss? Two things. First, you talk about what drive people to addiction. For example, internet or gamble or, or or drugs. Okay, try to put all your head together. What harms? We want to know what kind of harms to the extent that you know to the addicts and also the family. The second thing uh, is very important. I would like you to suggest, because after that you're going to present, uh, you suggest to all of us here the do's and don'ts to treat the addiction. You must state why. You say, okay, don't do this, why? Do this, why? Can? Ready? Ready to treat the addict? Either it's yourself or others. Okay. All right, we start from behind. Huh?
Just what internet. Uh. Yeah, so Abdul is talking about internet addiction. So, uh, so folks' question is exploring why some people may be addicted to the, the internet. So, uh, the discussion was quite, quite good. Uh, a lot of people contributed. So, uh, there are those who are working in the you know, computer line say that you know, uh, sometimes companies uh, they design their uh, yeah, web page uh, such that it causes you to be edited. Yeah. As in like they you know they design such that you want to come back more and more. So uh, partly to blame is also the company that's behind it. Yeah. But I was told that uh, uh, companies are becoming more aware of it. So some of these companies actually uh, implement measures not to have this kind of addiction. Uh, then another reason is internet is very convenient. Information is easily available. For example, you want to point out about tour, right? Touring the country, right? You can go into the internet and check. Okay. So say, uh, so because it's convenient, okay, then uh, a good thing can actually be quite addiction. You can easily access to it. Yeah. So uh, it actually progress to addiction maybe later. Uh, then the other type of internet addiction that we talk about is social media. Yeah, social media. Uh, it's not okay. One of our group members actually bring up the fact that it's not the internet that is the addition. It's what is the content. Uh, it could be computer games. It could be games. Or it could be social media. Or it could be shopping. Okay, or it could be pornography. Yeah. So it also depends on what are the content that they are talking about. So some, uh, so one of them share that social media actually is a, a platform uh, for you to find your ideal and your identity, or uh, for you to project an image uh, that is what you want others to see, but you are actually not like that. Yeah. So some people can be addicted to social media. Uh, and then uh, the doctor in our group bring up the fact that addiction got two types, okay? <laughs> physical and psychological. So internet is classified as a psych psychological addiction. <coughs> so uh, okay, other reason people may be addicted is uh, you know boredom. You know sometimes you're bored, yeah. So you just get addicted to it. Uh, others blame the family, the parents very busy, yeah, so no time to monitor the children. Uh, and uh, some say the addiction actually comes slowly, you know, you, you know, you are actually not aware that you are addicted. Uh, you won't be aware that you are addicted, uh, so, so the actual addiction comes slowly. Yeah. So, question two we ask, uh, how do we treat such an addiction? <coughs> uh, so one, one sister, uh, he was working in the uh, health industry. He said that he talked about the recent sing health case, uh, you know, when the, the cyber attack occurred, right? Okay, actually the hospital implement measures to restrict uh, restrict access to the internet. And he said that after implementation for one month, right? Okay, actually it's not very convenient to access the internet. Suddenly, uh, suddenly it becomes like, eh, they are free from that need to go into the internet. So what she's trying to say is that uh, one of the ways to break off the addiction is to cut off the source. And in this way, she's being helped by the com company. Uh, yeah. so, actually, so maybe this is one of the measures that uh, can be implemented at the company level. Yeah. Uh, then other people say is to get away from the addiction is to focus on other things that's of a more important priority. Okay. Uh, divert your attention to other thing uh, that's more important. Maybe godly things. Yeah. Then uh, the other thing is 
go for counselling. Uh, but actually, the person himself is very important. The person must be willing to change. So one sister bring up the example of, uh, okay, uh, you know of uh, somebody that smoke, that somebody know that actually smoking is bad for health. Okay, but despite telling the person, okay, it's no use. The person himself also know that smoking is bad for health. So, so in the same way for internet addiction, I mean, the person must be willing. Yeah. Uh, parents can play a part. Yeah. Some parents actually impose curfew for their children to access the mobile. Yeah. But uh, one group member cautioned that if you implement such a curfew, it must come with explanation. Yeah, I don't explain uh, and if you take this thing away from the child, right, the child can easily find another form of uh, leisure to feed his addiction. So you give a curfew but you also must explain. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Any any response from the other person? <coughs> you, you think uh, the uh, <coughs> the do and don'ts are very effective? They cure uh, addiction? of internet, whether it's media, or it is uh, pornography, or it is uh, red drama, Facebook, yeah? Okay, maybe we hear for the uh, second group. Uh, Elder Ong? Oh, maybe. Group 3, eh? 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 Okay, ours is drug and alcohol addiction. So, uh, oh, yeah. we, we, we don't have many experiences in al uh, drug or alcohol addiction, so we have to ask in coin experts. So, we have a few experts in our midst. So, they came in and give us advice on why they, why and how they started. Okay, so how, how do they get hooked on what drives them to this addiction? Uh, one aspect is that they want they are very uh, very stressed, very stressed up, and they want to find a way of escape. So one way they start smoking, and they find that sometimes they smoke, they relieve themselves or, or drink, or drink to drugs. We we don't have any expert, huh? Okay, or uh, sometimes it could be uh, the high they get from uh, the drinking itself, or maybe the drugs itself, the high feeling, you know. So they and they want it more and more and more and want it come keep coming back. Oh, the other one is peer pressure. How they started is a uh, uh, peer pressure. This a uh, friend asked him. So for uh, one of our brothers here who started is because of your friend buy a pack as a student, then they all just share. Each one take one or two, then they just share. So they started as a peer pressure. And uh, one key, uh, one other uh, uh, way to start, why they started it was were uh, either too free, nothing to do. So they try, try gambling, try smoking, try drinking, try uh, so it's idol, uh, Id idling. Uh. Okay, so uh, uh, on the other one, of course, is for young, maybe for more for, uh, maybe for younger people. They uh, they want to look macho. <coughs> you know, they want to smoke arrows. <laughs> <laughs> and the hair come out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something I look macho la, but not macho one la, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Correct, right? Uh, right, uh, okay, correct. Uh, okay, correct. Uh, uh, this is from our expert la, from our expert. Our expert, like, you know, look macho la. Uh, Gregory, Gregory, yes. He's a heavy smoker. One day, 60 stick, uh, 50, 60 stick. One day. Uh, but when he's gambling, he goes up to one day, 100 over stick. Yeah. Uh, the stick uh, is not the uh, it's not a uh, uh, <laughs> it's not your cheese stick, you know, it's a smoke. <laughs> okay. And what, what effect does it have? Health. Uh, one of them is health. Uh, Elder Gregory said when he at age of 31, he looked like 61. And uh, <laughs> face is oily, look very haggard, cannot be as handsome as me, so he feel very this very bad down emotionally. <laughs> but okay, health, uh, health is all there. Uh, of course, you know, death could be some cases. Um, sometimes, if you drugs will be brushes with the law or, or law of the land. Okay, and uh, the family will suffer. So we were sharing uh, when we are in prison and myself, or, or all our siblings, six of us, in our growing up days. My dad works, and my mom uh, at home, she drinks, and she's an uh, uh, alcoholic. So we have a week of food, and when she drinks, we have one week no food. 
So when she doesn't drink, we have a week of food. When she drinks for two weeks, there was two weeks no food. So we're food, no food. <laughs> so until we, we, we ourselves, the children, all these develop uh, gastritis at a very young age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is so skinny, it's because of that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, so it does affect the family, affect our relationship with our mom and all kind of thing. Then uh, I I even I, I share with them that at the at the age of primary two I actually attempted suicide. You know, but failed, like, failed. Like. Uh, that's why I'm still here. Like. <laughs> actually I'm a ghost. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, financially, financially also one pack of cigarettes is uh, twelve dollars now. Last time was uh, five, six dollars when I always buy for my dad, my mom and it's five, six dollars. Now it's already double, really, twelve dollars. You know, so I cannot afford. Eh? <laughs> so I have to do. I do my smoking differently. I go to SBC in my class. I will choose choose smoke. <laughs> smoke out the class. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. What should we do? We should be open to share. One of the things that we think we should do, lah. Like, we should open to share. Even not share when you are te- uh, only in the, uh, in the addiction. Share even when the temptation comes. You know, even before you get addicted, maybe the, you know this is an area of weakness, this is an area of temptation. You share with someone in the church, uh, your brothers and sisters who can you can trust with. What should we not do? This is for the whole church. What we should not do is we should not be shocked. Let's say a nurse come to me and say, uh, "I'm addicted to drinking." Then we, <gasps> we, re- we react like that. Then he will dare not to share with anyone really. Right, the, the church will, the church should not be shocked because we are all sinners, right? So we should not be shocked. If you honest come to me and say, I'm addicted to gambling, I go like ah, I call pastor, what then what then tell the whole world, tell the sinner, then uh <laughs> no, then, then Ernest is like uh, there's no no one that he can trust and no so we not, this is a very important thing, we should not be shocked by it. Okay, and second we also should not be deceived, we should not deceive ourselves. Because addiction is like that, we always deny addiction. When we are addicted, we say, no, I'm not addicted, I'm not addicted. 1 2 a.m., we see on our handphone. 1 2 a.m., we are still watching, uh, on, in the morning, we are still watching our TV or Korean drama. <coughs> no, I'm not addicted. I can cut off any time. Uh. I can cut off any time. Yeah. I can cut off any time. Uh. I can cut any time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cannot. So we cannot deceive ourselves. Should not deceive ourselves. Okay? And um, one, one thing that. Uh, from the expert themselves, they say you should not try like experimenting from fun. You don't even try starting some of these things that you know you get into addiction. Don't even try the fun. Or, by, like, never mind, like, one or two sticks, okay? Or just drink, okay? Or with a friend, just hang out. Just drink, 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 drink. One, one, one glass become two glasses, two, one, one bottle. You know, so we will. So don't even try some of these uh, fun if you know that is your area of weakness. Okay, so that's all we have. Okay, uh, a response from the other two groups? You know, get, uh, you also on the gambling. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I appointed Daniel Ho earlier. I said that we were into the person. Then Pastor came, Elder, you present. <laughs> <laughs> but God is humorous, and uh, I will take the, also the, the chance as well to share. Uh, it was in my past as well. Uh, uh, when I was a sec two uh, in school. I supplies English Premier League fixtures for the classroom gambling. <laughs> I don't gamble, but I'm also guilty because they gamble and uh, school principal came to know and our class was marked for gambling. Although none of us get caught. Uh, that was when I said too. And uh, later stage of my life, uh, we came from poor family. Me and my brother during Chinese New Year, we go for fun fair. Because we go to fun fair, we look for the store that is play the betting for drinks. Huh? So me and my brother will look at the odds. Even that we are 45, they are 55, huh? we will win them. We will know how to play the game, we will win them. Then after that, we will call my brother-in-law, come and fetch us, or we carry carton of drinks, take bus, go home. But people ask how we do it, huh? we cannot share because it's very bad. <laughs> Even today, occasionally when my brother go to Genting Highland, he will still win. But it's not a big time, huh? it's small. And uh, the last thing is uh, before I start is that my family, my mother's side actually in the past running a syndicate of 40 in Singapore. So for myself, I have conflict with my mother. We quarrel over all this when we stay in secure because I don't like it. But my mother do it, you know. And uh, my sister also involved. You can imagine my sister when she's 16, 15, 17 years old, uh, weekend she's busy in some place in Singapore. And they collect all the bags and she will do the process. So, 
this leads us to the question of this what drive many many reasons we collected. Some people it start from how say a small play, just passing a time by retiree or escape or stress, all these things. It can be go into further addicted. So this is what we wrote down here. And uh, some cases is people are tempted with others and start to play gamble and further addiction. Example, you say that some of the gambling organization give you free food, very cheap cruise to nowhere, something like that. So you go to the cruise, you pay for the food that was somebody laughing, so maybe it's true. Eh? <laughs> then they go and then they gamble and so on, then you get addicted. That is also possible, you know? Of course, some like discontent, discontentment with the current life and something that being a gambler, being branded like some friend, uh, wow, this guy knows how to gamble, it's a cool, you know? He belongs to a certain club. Okay, some people are smiling. And some people take it like a challenge of intelligence. Yeah. And uh, uh, the main thing that is uh, what I call a drive the few group is that uh, uh, one is a grip, quick success, or you call professional gambling. So I sharing a group that one day uh, my friend gave me, hey, you want a free ticket, very nice performance, you know, in uh, the kind of genting uh, casino performance. I said, how do you get a ticket? Then he said, my mother gave me, I asked for that actually, his mother is a professional gambler today. So they have always don't know what ticket, then you go and watch, you know. And uh, Ham, okay, uh, Faye was sharing that uh, her grandpa, father is a gambler, end up a lot of family problems, uh, physical abuse, and also money with the other side. And uh, another one is we, we put down here lead to social problems. Okay? Uh, actually, a country will not be at peace if a family is not at peace. If a family is not at peace, the country cannot be at peace. Right? So gambling is a real problem that we put down here in, uh, in Singapore also. Of course, now we still have all this casino is a challenge. Huh? Okay, so this is on the first one. On the second power, I suggest do and those. We, we don't have much time, so we suggest what the uh, treatment for addictions. And uh, starting we say, ah, Marion got medicine, not eat ready, we'll go gambling. <laughs> so of course don't have, lah, huh? So we are talking about that. But we say that some kind of support system is needed to help people to quit addiction of gambling. And uh, also another one is do is uh, trying to stay away to those really serious gamblers in your life. Friends who are very serious gamblers, it's better to stay away. Okay? And of course one of the solution, um, you all know that recently I went for fishing, one of my fishing khaki, his name is Jason. He's 68 years old from All Saints Presbyterian Church. He education only P4, so we thought a little bit more about history. He said that in the past, before he became a Christian, he do a lot of illegal things. One of the illegal things is gambling in Singapore. And of course, he do other imitation goods, bring in all these cells in Singapore. But I think the real medicine here, he was saying that what made him quit gambling, total life change. So to him, this because he came to know God. That is the real medicine that came to know God. So that's a, what I captured from the book. So be your question a lot. And they will answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you win the... <laughs> uh, that one, I will keep the secret until the day I die. <laughs> I won't even tell my son. The only requirement is that time on my hand, I will win. Over time. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Go to his room. Okay. Uh, I have read five, six books. Uh, this five books that I found. Why I read so many books is because I was trying to find I was trying to find a cure for addiction. So that any one of you or any one of your friends uh, addicted to anything, huh, you get a cure. I couldn't find. Okay. So this is what I found. This book is called uh, Hook. Huh? Uh, this one talk about uh, the pitfall of uh, media, technology, and social networking. First group. This book uh, talk about breaking free, understanding sexual addiction, and the healing power of Jesus. This one called Sex, Food, and God: Breaking Free from Temptations, Impulsion, Compulsion, and Addiction. 
written by this uh, guy. He's the author of uh, Becoming Who God Intended. This book, The Last Addiction, Why Self-Help is Not Enough. When I read this book, then I realize that stop looking for a cure. On your own desire, living beyond recovery, finding lasting freedom. Finally, this book called Helping Others Overcome Addiction. How God's Grace Brings Lasting Freedom. I found the answer. Now let me share with you. We always say that, uh, okay, let's throw the computer, uh, do this, do that, you know, blocking here, blocking there. Same thing also uh, for, 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 for the drugs. Same thing also for the gambling, you know, you can do all this thing. The truth is this, okay, because also some of you guys uh, actually did not talk about the addiction. You are just talking about some of the bad habits, you know, uh, you know, spend so, uh, much time on this and that. Really, addiction, an addict, huh? he is no more responsible for himself, he is no more responsible for the family with some of you uh, so face the, the, the problem. He is not himself. He is, he is possessed by the, like the, 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 the devil. Okay, so it's the kind of... something very crazy. You know that it is wrong, right? Wrong relation. It is, it's, it's wrong to go to the pornographic side. It is wrong to smoke so much. It's not wrong to gamble and, and blah, blah, blah. And then he begin to feel that, hey, you know that I'm for, unforgivable. I know that I damage I dam dam myself. I damage my marriage uh, uh, relationship. I damage the, the, the family, you know, like what I, I, uh, Ellen Chihong was talking about. Uh, his, his, own family, you know, but no food, okay? Then because you cannot forgive yourself, you cannot forgive, you, you, you don't think that other people will forgive you, you're very, you're very lonely, right? You're very, very alone. You dare not admit it, okay? But you don't admit it. So you feel very hopeless because you cannot give up the things that you are, you are doing, okay? So why so few find freedom from addiction? I heard of a story of uh, of uh, a man who who gambled, okay. And one day, this uh, bank come to his office and then uh, take away his car. So he have to take bus that day, right? So he go to the bus stop. He turn around the person next to to him and say, "Okay, let's bet uh, which which bus number will come first. That is addiction. Die, die must gamble." Because it cannot live in the morning, and we cannot leave the thought in the morning. Wake up, you think of a gamble. The planning is today how do I go and satisfy again of the addiction? <coughs> that is the issue. okay. But it would be very difficult for you to really convince them to get out of it because there are two lives that addicts will believe. Number one is that addiction brings relief to the pain. Just like some of you talk about how you are drawn people are drawn to addiction because of some. <coughs> Pressure at work, right? I went drink and take drugs and high and go to another world, right? So, so you think that you find relief. So don't leave. Don't tell me to leave my addiction. Second, second uh, life is that if I admit, huh, I have had two disaster, double disaster. You know why? First, I have to leave the God that I, I worship. At the same time, I have to leave the reality because, as I said to you, if I admit that I'm a drug addict. I don't think I can be the pastor of this church. Right? Don't talk about the pastor of the church, right? even in your, in your own office. <coughs> or you are a gambler. Okay, things like that. So, because of this, but this is lie, you know why? <laughs> this is, that's why addiction in, in a modern day is the most powerful, the devil's trick to trap Christian. Don't own up. Continue to stay with me, okay? Because there's a devil and a deep blue sea in front of you. All right. So this is uh, the prospect of recovery is very very low. Therefore, implication: don't go there. Don't get into that. Okay. So just now you can, you 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 you, you may think that oh, okay, uh, you just don't do, don't get too near and things like that. 
it should be more serious than that. Okay, huh? Look at this. In spite of using all these things, huh? you think there is a reduction of people smoking? No. Okay, look at this one. When you are hooked, your children suffer too. No, I don't care about my children. <coughs> Let's look at Jane. Jane talked about what causes quarrel and what causes fight among you. Is it not that your passions are at war within, within you? I want to go a bit quickly. We have a struggle in the addict. We have a struggle in the heart. Which loyalty? Who should I be loyal to? Which God should I loyal to? You ask wrongly, and it's, you ask wrongly to spend, to spend it on your passion. You still want to do that? You adulterous people, right? Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world himself will be the enemy of God. This one I, I spoke uh, that before. But what the Bible advised us is that you have to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You have to do something and put in the effort to resist it. Right? Uh, like I think one of you said that uh, you, you have to be willing uh, to, to go for a cure. Huh? Submit yourself with, uh, therefore to God. Jade points us to God. There's no other place. I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you further uh, uh, evidence. You double-minded. Again, this is a struggle. We are thinking of this uh, addition more than anything. Be, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter to turn to morning and your joy to bloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and you, and He will exalt you. James clearly say that the cure is in God. We will continue to struggle. Addicts will continue to struggle. They cannot help themselves, and we have to help Him. How do we help Him? Okay, I want to talk, talk a little bit about this self help is not of life. Okay, the problem is because the problem is not outside but inside the person, right? The methods of forced behavior last only for a while. I read all this book, they keep telling me the same thing over and over again. You can impose this, impose that, and they will try, okay? The addict will try, okay? Okay, I don't smoke, I don't smoke. You know, I, I try to use my willpower. Maybe lah, for a short while, you still go back again. So, the conclusion that I, I, I found is that we need not a program. The program is good. You can go ahead and do that. But eventually, you still need a person. Okay? Romans 7, 24, Paul said, Wretched man that I am, who? Watch carefully how, how he asked the question. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Who? He did not say what. Okay? Then, the following verse, he said, Thanks be to God, to Jesus Christ our Lord, so then I myself serve the law of God. With my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. It's a person, the person of Jesus Christ, that can really rescue the addicts. Okay? Biblical approach to treatment of addiction. Two very important points. First, is to remember that we are going to find a true and lasting freedom in Christ. Okay? If you are addicted to pornography, you can delete all the website after you watch. But you remain in your mind. So throwing away computer and all those, it doesn't actually help the addict. Okay? Same thing also. <coughs> if you have sexual uh, addiction, yeah, even after you get married, you have your own wife and your own husband, you will still think of the past images. You come and haunt you because you are addicted to sex. Second thing to bear in mind is that biblically we don't judge and push uh, your brother or sister back to addiction. We will think that, ah, you know, I think one of you guys will say that. It, 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 it is not our job to shame the person because the person already know. As I said, uh, they, they are believing in the two lies. Shaming would help you push the person back to addiction again. Because the addicts are really feeling the pain, suffering pain of, and hurts of some kind. And yet, you, sh you shame them, then you sing them. Okay? Alright? Addict, what addict need is a loving father. They preach this morning, okay, who value relationship more than his disability. The addicts 
is irresponsible and lack ability to help himself or help anybody. Okay? So, the father, only the father can help. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as son by whom we cry. The addict must finally be able to cry out to God the Father. Addicts need a life shift from a false world into the real world. Okay? This real world has to be provided by the Father in an all-satisfying and everlasting world. Okay? So this is what uh, in the biblical approach we have to take note for. Huh? So shifting hope, hope for the future from self, okay, to Jesus. So what addict needs to walk out of the prison or the bondage of the addiction to freedom, to walk free, not just to walk free for a while, but have to stay free, then that is the real cure. Okay? How to do that? Just like you get out of the prison, huh? okay, we need to have a new identity. We need to know that we die with Christ and we have a new life. Colossians 3, 3, 4 tells us, For you have died in your life in, is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appear, then you also will appear with Him in glory. So this dying with Christ is a very important understanding we have to bring back to the addicts. And addicts must also know that he is being valued as a wholesome person. We are not wholesome, right? But only in Christ that then we will be wholesome. Then we can grow. Then we can enjoy. That means we have come to the understanding that our life matters to God. Even you are so loved, but God still loves you. Okay? Finally, being loved more than disgusted. I tell you, if you really live with an addict, you will be disgusted. Right now. With, with, with whatever they are doing because they keep going back and back and back again alright so in Romans chapter 8 1 tells us that in Christ there is no condemnation so what do we tell the addict this is our job okay if you like to help an addict beside all the other measures that they have counseling and things like that huh? a doctor prescription or whatever it is this is the thing that we must do we must continue to tell the person what Christ has done for them, who they are in Christ, what Christ has given them. Okay, because being an addict and you join in that for whatever reason, something is lacking in the person's life. They're looking for something, looking for an escape, going for a world that is not real and believing in this world. So we must keep remember and remember. Focusing on and learning from Jesus is a solution. Okay, not trying to make the addict to be good and do good. Any objection to that? That would be a wrong focus. Okay, right. Addicts cannot, listen carefully, cannot do the right thing until they know the truth of who they are in Christ and what He has done for them. Very simple and basic, right? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it too very simple and basic? <laughs> After reading six books, then I realized that, that is only, this is the only way. Okay, so this verse is important. Galatians 2.20 tells us, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The rescue for the addict is Christ. And we must bring them to the point to realize this. That he cannot live his life anymore. He has no more power. He has to surrender and admit and realize that Christ actually is alive in him. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself. In other words, we have to keep talking to this person, praying for this person, and let the Holy Spirit work. Now what will be the success rate? I don't know. I don't know. Damage is done. And there will be further damage. Okay? So the devil and the deep lose sin. But yet we have permission 
to help and to rescue. So in other words, uh, if you look at, at addict, any kind of addiction, what we need to really look for and pray for is to resurrect this dead body to life again. And it has to be Christ that do the job. Okay? So Galatians 5, 16, 18 tells us that we must walk in the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desire of the self. So we have to help the addicts to really shift okay, his whole life from walking with the devil to walking in the spirit. Once the addict is walking in the spirit, he will never go back there again. Okay? So the desire of the flesh are against the spirit. The fighting will keep going on. So this, this evil spirit will continue or the spirit or, or the desire for addiction will continue to keep the addict from doing the things that you want to do. So we need to really show sympathy to the person who fell into any of the addiction. That is our duty. Okay? So, in conclusion, ultimate cure is a person. So I, I realized that yeah we have to go through all the program, but that is only certain measure that we do it in this physical world to help the addict. But remember, you go back to people. Okay, so we have to help them to cross that to Christ. Christ's unconditional love is the true cure. Not what we can do, but what Christ has done. So don't walk away. Two person. We don't walk away from them. And they don't walk away from us. Brother, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Galatians 6 1. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be entered. Okay? So as we are helping the addict. We mustn't feel that we are more superior. And it becomes a warning to us. If you have seen people suffer so much, their families suffer so much, we should take it as a warning to us. Don't go there. Okay? I want to share with you this before we sing the closing song. When I was younger, I don't have a father, so my mother went out to work. But when she came back, she saw us. You know, when we were young, we were naughty, right? So we get into trouble. So my mother's heart is broken. And then we stay in, we live in this uh, rubber plantation. So my mother don't have cane. But you know, rubber plantation, rubber tree, you know, those are dry leaves that will drop down when the wind blow, right? So her heart so broken, so she picked up those dry branches. And she came us and came us and came us. And when she came us, you know the, the branches will break, right? All the branches broken. That's why I say the love in the broken head. And she fell and, and it fell on the seat and she cried. But the next day, she will go back to her work. And to get to try to earn some money, make some money to feed us and see us through the education. My point is this. This is the Father's love. This is just like our God the Father who loves us. A painful love when we fall into sins like this. He loves us. But sometimes we need to feel the pain that when we realize the consequences and what you guys say that you know you want to be you want to be helped. But can you really do all those things to want you to be helped? We need we need God. We need God. So if we are all non-Christian today, we don't have Christ in our life or, or the Bible to talk about, we will be floating around and trying very hard to do this and that. You know, we try to stop the person. 
correct? To, to, to not to do this and not to do that. But eventually, they will still be like that. We will fail. We will become very disappointed. Okay? All right. But we have got to really love the person. So finally, is that we need to love the person until the person is able to see. Pray for the person. Okay? Now, what should you pray? As I said, you may have to pray that this addict will come to the end of everything and turn around. For a gambler, you don't give him money. You are actually adding and encouraging the person to continue with the addiction. Same thing for drugs and all the other things. Okay? Right. So it is love. So we have to close the, I sing the closing song.